Gunsmoke. Brought to you by L&M Filters. Make today your big red letter day. Your L&M red letter day. Change to L&M. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America. And the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful. And a little lonely. <laughs> A lonesome town, Dodge City. A handful of sunburned buildings half lost in the empty prairie. With a few scrawny cottonwood trees along the plaza. And the river and the red clay bluffs to the south. A frontier town like all the others. Except for one difference. We're on the railroad. So about once a day, when the train starts whistling off in the east, the folks in Dodge listen and remember that they're part of a bigger world outside. A different world beyond the plains. Well, just looky there, Mr. Dillon. A brand new record this time, pulling four coaches in a baggage car. Yeah, they keep getting longer all the time, don't they, Tessa? Why, in eight or ten years, I bet you'll see six and seven coach trains rolling into Dodge. Yeah, it'd be more surprising if they'd ever get them in on time. Yeah, come on. Let's uh, pick up that strong box and take it over to the bank, huh? Look at there. Dudes with a dozen. Oohing and awing around. <laughs> Just look at them. Dressed fit to kill. Now, they'll get over it. Some of them, at least. The rest of them will go back east. Well, there's one I sure hope don't. My. Uh -huh. What? If you want to meet her, why don't you drop into Long Branch Saloon? She gonna work there? Well, do you know her, Mr. Dillon? No, but she's got that look. Oh, my. Hey, Ed! It's Matt Dillon. Open up. You know, this is what I ought to been, Mr. Dillon. A baggage clerk. Oh, uh -huh. Just one run a week to Kansas City and back and collect your pay. Yeah, that sounds pretty easy, doesn't it? Hey, Ed! He's probably asleep. Nothing else to do the whole trip. Yeah, I suppose so. Let me get up there, Chester. Maybe I can see through the window. See anything? No, not much. This glass is so dirty that... Chester! What's the matter? Go find Doc. I gotta break the latch on this door now. Hurry! <laughs> Chester. Bear down just a little harder. It's starting to give. Right. Watch your hand, Chester. Yeah, I'm watching. Ah, ah, yes. Yeah. All right. That's it. Let's get her open. It's. Oh. That's it. There he is. Laying over there in the corner. Yeah. Ed. I guess he won't be answering, Matt. Two bullets right over the heart. Either one of them would have done the job. Yeah, but the baggage car was locked. Whoever done it couldn't have got out. Probably stepped out on the ledge there, slid the door shut behind him. The latch catches by itself. Oh, Matt. Yeah, what is it, Doc? There's another one down at the end of the car. What? Just a kid. 
kid. He's not over ten years old. And he's been shot. Same as the baggage clerk. Why, that's Ed's own boy, Billy Barton. Ed must have took him along on this one. Is he hurt bad, Doc? No, just grazed his head the way it looks. He'll pull through all right. Good. Look, I want to talk to the conductor and the train crew. You stay here and give Doc a hand, will you, Chester? Yes, sir, I will. Oh, uh, Chester, by the way, that soft job is open now if you want it. Somebody said the train was held up. Yeah, somebody got into the baggage car and killed Ed Barton. Shot his son. Took the strong box. Around $20,000, I guess. And they got away? Yeah, it looks that way. Train crew figures it must have happened near the Walnut Creek crossing. Whoever did it dropped off when the train slowed down for the trestle there. What about the boy, Billy? Oh, he'll live. Doc's patching him up now. Poor little kid. Ed was all he had, and now... He's left with nobody. Yeah, it's too bad. It's going to be rough on Laura, too. She and Ed were planning to be married. That's what I heard. So I figured I'd better stop by and tell her. Well, maybe she can go back to Taggart. He's still around. She left him when she and Ed started going together. But she's not one to be without a man. Marshal. Make it gentle, Matt. There's nothing gentle about death, Kitty. Marshal, nobody will tell me anything. What's happened? Ed's been hurt, hasn't he? Yes, I'm afraid he has, Laura. I knew that's what it was. Is it bad? Couldn't be any worse. No. No. I'm sorry, Laura. He's dead. No, Marshal. No. Oh. Kitty, will you take care of her? I gotta go see if the boy's able to talk oh, yet. Don't worry about her, Matt. She'll be all right. Just... Get whoever did it, that's all. Don't let him get away with it. Well, I'm hoping the boy can help me in some way. As it is, I got nothing to go on. Nothing at all. There, now, son, I... I got you all fixed up. Now, you're going to be all right. There's nothing to worry about. Well, I bet you've been hurt worse just from bumping your head. Oh, it ain't so hurting, Doc. I know, son. Make it sure as you can, Matt. He's pretty broke up about it. Yeah, all right, Doc. Well, Billy, you, uh... Feel like talking? I'm all right. What happened, Billy? Well, we was maybe three or four miles the other side of Walnut Creek, and somebody knocked on the door of the car. The one that goes back toward the coaches. When Dad opened it, this man came in with a gun. Anybody you know? You ever seen him before? No. He, he had a handkerchief over his face. Ah. Uh, well, w- was there anything special about him? His shape, size, or clothes, maybe? Uh, no, sir. Nothing I can remember. I don't know who he was, Marshal, but I know I hate him. That, that's enough. Billy, what happened then when he came in with the gun? Well, he, he pointed at my dad and said he'd shoot him if he made a move. Dad grabbed for the shotgun on the wall. And the man fired two times and Dad fell. I started toward him and the man fired again. And that's all I remember. Ah. I see. You don't figure that you'd know this man if you saw him again, huh? No, I I don't guess so. Not unless he talked. What? I'd know his voice all right, even if he's trying to fool me. Well, well why? Well, what was special about it? Well, I don't know exactly. It was, it was kind of weak-like or something. It's hard to explain, but I'll know it. Any time I hear it. Well, we'll try to make sure you do hear it, Billy. Now, you take it easy now. You get that head all healed up. Huh? I will. Okay. Chester. 
Mister. Uh, fix up one of the cells over to jail, huh? I want to get the kid moved over there right away. Oh, why so, Mr. Gill? But now the whole town knows Billy's alive. He's the only witness who can identify the killer. And the killer knows it. Today, your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day, superior taste and filter. It's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L and M today. L and M's got everything. Superior taste and superior filter. Get L and M today. This is it. L and M superior taste and filter. Superior taste from tobaccos especially selected for filter smoking. Tobaccos that are richer, tastier. Light and mild. And L&M's superior filter is white. Pure white. Truly the miracle tip. Because when it's added to L&M tobaccos, it actually improves your enjoyment of this great cigarette. Next time you buy cigarettes, look for the big red letters L&M. Smoke L&M filters. America's best filter tip cigarette. L&M's got everything. Get L&M today. Billy Barton moved into a cell at the Dodge City Jail. And Chester stayed with him most of the time to keep him company and to keep him alive. Meanwhile, I combed the town from one end to the other, brought in every gunslinger, saddle bum, and drifter I thought might fit the bill. Get your hands up, stand still, don't make a move. Well, what do you think, Billy? Does that sound anything like him? No, sir. I mean, maybe it's kind of like him. But he's not the one, Marshal. Yeah. Now, all right, Chester, take him out. Yes, Come on, Oh, and uh, bring in Hawkley, will you? All right, Mr. Dillon. See, Billy, it takes time, but uh, we'll get him sooner or later. This is a preposterous outrage, Marshal. This is an unmitigated insult. Men of my character and integrity to be dragged in here... To You're a sniveling anything. card sharp, and you've been dragged into Look. half the jails west of the Mississippi. Marshal, I beg your pardon. Just keep talking, Pegasus. Well, uh, it's true. Uh, of course, one or two occasions in the past I was accused <clears throat> falsely, basely, unjustly, with deliberate malice. Uh, accused of certain more or less uh, criminal activities... <clears throat> which it goes without saying I was entirely innocent and blameless. It ain't him, Marshal. Regardless. His voice ain't nothing like it. Now, that's too bad. I've been trying to nail him on something for the last year. All right, Pegasus. You can shut up now. Well, I've only begun I to said that's enough. That. Throw him out, Chester, then bring in the next one. <laughs> long am I going to have to stay here, Chester? Well, that's kindly hard to say, Billy. Oh, it must have been over a week already. Oh, yeah, something like that, I guess. Uh, how about a nice game of checkers? Oh, I'm tired of checkers. Well, casino, then. That's a good, interesting game. I don't want I want to get out of here. Well, now, we got to give that head of yours time to heal up proper. Oh, that ain't the reason. I know why you and the marshal are keeping me here. Well, it's just because we're... Yeah, you, know, you think that man on the train's going to try and kill me. That's how come you're doing it. Now, whatever could give you an idea like that? You ain't going to find him. He wouldn't stay around here. He's halfway to St. Louis by now. Well, now, Billy, you just can never tell why that fellow might be... Sit tight, Billy. Yes, sir. Who is it? Who's there? Is that you, Chester? Oh... Miss Laura, hey, just a minute. Oh, 
sorry to keep you waiting, Miss Laura. Well, that's all right. Well, how are you, Billy? All right, I guess. Well, do you suppose I could interest a couple of hungry men in some home-cooked food? Oh, yes, ma'am, you sure could. Here, let me take that basket. Oh, look at that. Why, that's better than last year's church social. How's your head, Billy? All right, I guess. Well, I've got something here that's going to make it better in a hurry. Oh, what's that? Slice of rum cake. One of the girls I work with had it sent all the way from New York, and I talked her out of a piece of it, just for you. Well, now, what do you say for that, Billy? Thank you. Hi, you're welcome, Billy. It, you'd better sit right down here and help us eat up some of this good food, Miss Laura. <laughs> well, I'd like to, Chester, but I got a change to get on over to the Long Branch. My work day's just starting, you know. Well, we, we sure do appreciate this. Well, i see you later. Uh, Billy, I, I know it's sort of understood that you're going to go live with Miss Austie over at the boarding house when you leave here, but, well, I've, I've always wanted a little boy. One all my own, and I'd... Well, I'd kind of like for it to be you. Well? Well, you don't have to answer now, but think it over, Billy. Yes, ma'am. Well, good night, you two. Good night, Miss Laura. Well, now, what do you think about that? It's all right, I guess. All right? Well, I think it's just fine. Uh, Billy, let me get a knife from under my mattress, and we'll try out these vittles of yours. <laughs> No, not right now, thanks, Kitty. Hmm. It's Ed Barton's murder. Still bothering you, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Well, you can't win every hand. No, man. but this one's different, Kitty. Ed was killed in cold blood. And Billy, a kid of that age, shot down and left to die. Somebody's going to pay for it, Kitty. Well, you could be following a cold trail, Matt. Might have been a drifter, someone who never even came near Dodge City. No, I don't think so. For one reason. Only three people were ever told when those money shipments were being made. Me and Ed and Mr. Botkin over at the bank. And that killer knew. Knew exactly which trip to hit. Now, it was somebody from this town. Had to be. Well, it sounds that way, all right. The killer's here in Dodge and the money's here. And sooner or later, I'm going to find them both. Well, I hope it's sooner, Matt. You're beginning to look like a scarecrow. I'll make out. How's uh, Laura getting along? Oh, not too bad, I guess. She's kept it to herself mostly. Hasn't talked about it. Might be better if she would. I suppose. I've heard that she started hanging around with Taggart again, though. Taggart? Uh huh. I thought he went to Kansas City. Well, he did a couple of weeks ago. I guess he's back again. Anyway, one of the bartenders claims he saw him night before last over on the south side, and of course that's where Laura lives. Taggart, huh? She's even started talking like him again the last few days. She's a regular parrot. You know that voice of his? Soft and sort of husky like. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Thanks, Kitty. For what? I'll see you later. Chester, come on, open up. All right, I'm, I'm coming, Mr. Dillon. Well, it sure is good to see a face from the outside world, Mr. Dillon. Is Billy all right? Well, sure he is. Why wouldn't he be all... What's happened? I think I know who did it. Well, how are you making out, Billy? How much longer have I got to stay here, Marshal? Well, I think it's just about over now. Uh, say, where'd all this come from? Uh, Miss Laura fetched it. Oh, we had ourselves a real feed. At least I did. Billy wasn't very hungry. He didn't even eat the special slice of rum cake she brought for him. Special, huh? Mm-hmm. What'd you do with it, Billy? Oh, I'm sorry, Marshal, but I didn't want it. I give it to that old hound dog that's been hanging around. Oh, I see. 
Uh, Chester, I wonder if you'd step out back here for a second. All right, Mr. Young. We'll be right back, Billy. Yes, sir. Chester, go find Clint Murphy and have him come back here and keep an eye on Billy for the next hour. Well, ain't no need for Clint. I'll be here, Mr. No, you Young. won't. We're going to pick up a killer. I can't take any more chances. What do you mean? The dog. The one Billy gave his special kick to. Flying out there by the edge of the street. It's been poisoned. <laughs> Today, your big red letter day, your L and M red letter day, superior taste and filter. It's the miracle tip. Make today your big red letter day. Change to L and M today. L and M's got everything. Superior taste and superior filter. Get L and M today. This is it. L and M superior taste and filter. Superior taste from tobaccos especially selected for filter smoking. Tobaccos that are richer, tastier. Light and mild. And L&M's superior filter is white, pure white. Truly the miracle tip, because when it's added to L&M tobaccos, it actually improves your enjoyment of this great cigarette. Next time you buy cigarettes, look for the big red letters L&M. Smoke L&M filters, America's best filter tip cigarette. L&M's got everything, get L&M today. How many times you've done it before, the same thing always happens. Every time you start out to bring in a killer, you know what's waiting for you. And the muscles under your belt knot up, and your heart starts to pound. But after a few minutes, you go cold and loosen up. And then it's all right. You stop thinking then. Stop feeling anything. You just go out and do the job. Kindly peaceful life. Yeah. I swear I don't know, Mr. Dillon. It just makes you wonder. What is it gets into people? I got no answer for you, Chester. That's her place there, the second one down. Yeah, I know. You think he'll be there? I think he'll be there. All right, stay clear, Chester. Watch yourself. Yes, sir, I will. She was just using Ed Barton so she could find out the date of the shipment. That's right. I can't understand. Get out. There he is, there by the porch, Mr. Dillon. Come on. Over here by the back of the tree. He ain't got much cover there. We must have caught him unexpected. He won't stay there. He'll make a run for it. We'll wait him out. I don't know, Mr. Elnett. Don't look like he's... There he goes. Drop the gun, Taggart. You're under arrest. <laughs> Your last chance, Taggart! <laughs> All right, come on, Chester. That's the end of it. No. Not yet. What? You wait here. Yes, sir.
You killed him, didn't you, Marshal? Put that gun down, Laura. The only man in this world I ever cared about. And you killed him. You'd never stop me with one shot and you know it. I'd still have time to draw and kill you. You're not the man to draw a gun on a woman. I never have before. But a little while ago, I saw a dog lying dead in the street. And if you'd have had your way, it'd have been a kid instead. So you better put that gun down and take your chances with a jury. Because you got no chance with me. <laughs> You're under arrest. That kid. That's what beat us. The minute I heard he was alive, I knew it was starting to go wrong. It started long before that, Laura. What do you mean? When? The day you were born. Now our star, William Conrad. I'm telling you, the day you change to L&M, well, that's the day. Your big red letter day. No filter stacks up with L&M's pure white miracle tip. And I know you'll go for L&M's taste, superior taste you get from L&M's superior tobaccos. Richer, tastier tobaccos. Next time, look for those big red letters on the L&M pack. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The special music for Gunsmoke was composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Ray Kemper. Featured in the cast were Virginia Christine, Richard Beals, and Lawrence Dobkin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Tomorrow's better cigarette today. Next time you buy cigarettes, stop. Remember, only Chesterfield is made the modern way with Accuray. You'll notice how fresh and good Chesterfield's made with Accuray taste, how smooth they are, and how they satisfy. So buy Chesterfield today. Smoother, cooler, best for you. <laughs> Watch an entirely different Gunsmoke show tonight on your local CBS television station. Remember, Gunsmoke on TV tonight, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. And be sure and listen to Gunsmoke again on radio next week, transcribed for L&M Filters. <laughs>